of the important concepts you want to make sure you understand when writing C programs is understanding where in memory your variables are allocated. So let's do a quick example and In this example, we're going to focus on just the variables and where they're located. We're not going to do a lot of work with those variables. So my first variable is going to be a global variable. And that's going to be allocated in static memory. And static memory is the memory that your compiler knows about when it compiles the program. It knows it's going to have global variables. It knows it's going to have static local variables. So all of those get allocated essentially by the compiler. And there's a memory location that always exists for that variable while your program runs. So if you write a function, and it'll take an integer parameter. And I'll, I'll declare a local variable. And that local variable will be allocated on the stack when the function is called. And if I declare a static local variable, that'll get allocated in static memory because there's only going to be one copy of this variable in my program. So in the in this particular function, I'll print the value of each of these variables and its address. And to avoid the warning, I'll cast this to avoid parameter. Actually, I'll just leave it for now. And I'm going to do this for each of these variables. Let me make my screen a little wider. Why don't I go ahead and do that for the local for the global variable too, just so that you can see that that is available to me in this function. And just to cause a little bit of trouble, I'll increment the global variable and the static local variable before my function exits. And that'll just guarantee that those change. So if I call this twice, we should see those values change. So in my main method or main function, and you'll see just like I did all of the variables in the function, I prefix those with a lowercase f. I'll prefix all my main functions with a lowercase m. So this is a local variable. Even though it's in main, main is just a function. So that'll be allocated on the stack. And my static local variable in main would also would be allocated in static memory. Now, if I have a pointer and I want to initialize that, this gets allocated on the stack because this is just a variable. A pointer is just a variable. There's memory allocated it for a stack. Now that, that variable holds a memory address and it could hold an address 
anywhere, static or local memory. But if we use malloc to allocate some memory here, that memory will be allocated on the heap. So let me change these to their new names. I'll still print out the global variable. And to test my code, I'll increment the global variable. I'll call my function. And I'll call that with the value Let's do negatives for the for that parameter. I'll increment global variable again. Actually, I'll need to change that so my output's not confusing. I'll print out those values again, and I'll call the function again, this time with, instead of negatives, let's do 100 and 200. Try to keep the numbers different so that we can differentiate those values. And I think it'll be good to just print a blank line here, just to kind of separate what's going on. So let's compile that. And we have a bunch of warnings. Uh, I think those should mostly be the void pointer. So here, the reason I'm getting this warning is because that expects a void pointer. Uh, to, to avoid those warnings, I'll go ahead and cast all those to void pointers. I think that should get rid of those warnings. And it does, good. Ah, I didn't do that in my function. So here I have this local of our pointer, we set it, we never use it. Ah, that's true. And since this one's a little bit different, we it's going to hold a value and a, it, it, well, it'll hold an address, but that address, there'll be a value there. So let's initialize it. So we need to dereference to actually treat this as an alias to that memory we allocated in the line above. And we'll say that it's 60. So my pointer, and it's equal to this. But the value it stores there. So it's, it's going to hold a pointer, but it'll, it'll hold up. That pointer is pointing to an integer. So we can dereference it. And this is a big mess, so we'll make it on two lines. And I'll need to cast that to avoid pointer as well to avoid the warning. And let's do that same thing here, just so that we print it in each case. And that way we'll just sort of see how this memory changes. The only thing that really should change is the global variable and the static local variable in our function. So if I run this, it looks like it compiled fine. And we can see we start off at main. So if you look at the values of the, well, if you look at the addresses of the variables, you can see that we're storing the local variable FFFFCC1C. This is in a completely different location. 
but that static local variable is in a similar location to the global variable. You'll notice there's only eight difference. And the pointer, it has a value that's also in a third different location. It's not like the static addresses. You'll see that those are 0x1, this is 0x6, blah, blah, blah. But the address of the pointer is near one of those stack values. So 1c and 110 here, you can see that they're close together in memory. So for our function values, the parameter, that's a that's a local variable. So you'll see that it's allocated on the stack in a in a address very close to where our stack variables from main are. The static local variable, notice that it's very close to main static local variable because that's static memory and our global is in static memory as well. And you'll see that in the function, the static local variable and the global variable both change. As we move through this, those values change. And then finally, in main, the global value changes again because we've called functions. We're incrementing our global variable each time we call the function, so it gets changed. We also do it a couple times in main. Those changes all get reflected anywhere that global variable is used. Now, the difference in a static variable, like we have here, is while it's allocated in static memory, the scope of this variable is limited to just this function. This is useful for if we want to keep track of how many times we call a function or if there's some sort of changing function that we want to keep consistent through all calls to a particular function. This is an example of the different memory locations you have access to in C. And C++, it's very similar, and we'll do an example later on that. So one thing I forgot to mention is we actually have a, it's not really a memory leak, but we don't free that memory before we, once we're done with it. I want to make sure that we do free the memory pointed to by the local variable pointer we created. And you could argue that freeing this memory right at the end of main doesn't make sense because as soon as this happens, we free all the memory. But it's amazing how many times your main method eventually becomes a function in your code somewhere that you, okay, this main method works, it does something good, but I'm going to turn it into a function so that I can do other things with it. Or if you copy and paste code or, or something like that. So it's always a good habit to get into to always free your memory, even if you don't explicitly have to. Always be explicit with everything as much as possible, even though it adds code in the end, in the long run, you probably avoid more issues than this will create because this works. It doesn't do anything wrong. It's just an extra line of code, but it's an extra line of code that later on I might be happy to have and it'll avoid a copy and paste error.